Welcome back, you lovely bunch. Thanks for tuning in again. I hope you're all doing good. All right, winter is well and truly on its way here in the UK. The past six weeks, it's been pretty much raining non-stop. And whilst we don't have like freezing cold temperatures here, we get a load of rain, it gets a bit cold, and these two combined, you get that whole wet wind chill factor. So layering up is super important if you want to keep riding outside over the winter months. And I personally would much rather ride outside than sit inside and do a workout, even though it's very convenient sitting on the indoor trainer. I like getting outside and getting some fresh air. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what items of clothing I wear on a winter ride, how I layer up, what items I feel are most essential. I mean, all of them, I'm gonna be honest. If you wanna survive winter and you don't wanna spend it riding indoors on the turbo trainer, get some good winter kit. It will last you a few winters, which is a few years essentially. And it means you can get out and enjoy that fresh air rather than being stuck inside on your indoor trainer. I mean, I love an indoor workout, but there's nothing quite like getting out and riding. It's currently like one degree Celsius outside. So it's quite nippy, a little bit fresh. There's no rain forecast, but you can't trust the weatherman. So I will be packing a light rain jacket just in case. So first on when you're layering up, base layers. Base layers are amazing. So in the winter, always, always, always going for a long sleeve base layer. And what I like is I like ones that are like thermal lined. Look, it's all like nice and furry. You don't honestly have to buy like crazy expensive brands. It doesn't have to be cycling specific, like any decent base layer that's long sleeved and thermal lined, I'd say will be ideal for cycling. Right, so the next thing, I'm not sure if this is just me. I have a bit of a whole weird thing with this. Like look, I have these wrapper winter bibs, right? These are amazing. Again, they're like thermal like lined. I think it's like Roubaix lining or something they call it. But it's dead warm, keeps you all snug. But for me, Wearing longs makes me feel like I'm wearing leggings. This sounds weird because I shave my legs and prance around in lycra very often, but do you know what I prefer? I prefer cycling shorts and leg warmers. So I have these universal colours ones. They're Roubaix lined, again, fleece lined. This is pretty much the thing, right? Everything for winter, you'll find, has a really nice, like, thermal soft lining. So I have these universal colours bib shorts. These aren't actually a winter bib short. But because the leg warmer, if anyone doesn't know what a leg warmer is, it pretty much does what it says on the tin. It keeps your leg warm and you don't have to wear longs. It pulls up and this has got a gripper on the outside. So this has like grippers on the inside, that has grippers on the outside and combined, it stops them falling down. I just prefer the aesthetic look of this over a pair of longs. But if the weather's really bad and really, really cold, I will just say sod it all. I'm gonna put my long leggings on. I just like that like snugness they give you. But it's not that cold today, so we are gonna be going for some bib shorts and leg warmers. Right, bear with me whilst I chuck these on. Very much not on camera. Right, leg warmers. My advice to people using leg warmers is I would put these on before you put your bibs on. The only reason I'm not doing it the other way around is because, well, I'd look very funny standing here on camera, exposing myself to the internet. I mean, it's a cost of living crisis, but I don't think it's quite come to that yet. I don't know, should I start on OnlyFans? That's the next question I'm gonna ask you guys. <laughs> it's not that cold today, so we are going for the leg warmer cycle short combo, because I think it looks nicer. Right, so I've got a snug thermal long sleeve base layer, and then obviously my jersey is long sleeved. I'm not gonna bother with a short sleeve jersey. It's far too cold to even be messing about with that. But this again is fleece lined and you'll find a lot of the winter jerseys from whichever brand they will have like a thermal fleece lining some will be like water repellent i mean you do get some of the stuff that's water resistant like the castelli stuff or the rafa shadow stuff honestly i just prefer a good waterproof jacket over a waterproof jersey so it's not raining i will not be needing a big rain jacket luckily but what i will take out is my gilet so this one's actually like a bit puffy which is quite nice because when you're descending, that's when you get really cold. If I'm doing efforts and I'm riding, I'll keep nice and warm. It's not too bad. I'm absolutely boiling sitting here in the house wearing this talking to you. So I'm gonna have to rush through the next couple of items with which I've lost gloves. I have a bag of gloves downstairs. They're different thicknesses. Like they're from like light winter to heavy winter. I don't really suffer from cold hands. So I don't often ride gloves. And also I find it really awkward to operate a camera whilst wearing gloves. But for most people, I would recommend a really nice pair of winter gloves. And again, these don't have to be cycling specific. You can go and buy any like, I mean, if you get really cold hands, you want to go all in, just go buy some cheap skiing gloves. 
I normally get my layering pretty right. The only time I mess up is when I don't take my gloves out or I don't wear my overshoes. And that nicely brings me on to the next one, overshoes. So I have these very posh gyro shoes. They're very posh indeed, right? The main problem is they're really well ventilated. I mean, it's great in the summer for the like six weeks of warmth we get, but in the winter, absolutely bloody freezing. And rather than have to get a second pair of shoes for cycling in the winter, what I find is really handy is overshoes. Overshoes are the best thing in the world. I mean, they are an absolute nightmare to put on sometimes. So you get all different types, by the way. Look, you get these like thick, like winter ones that are like a neoprene, 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 neoprene boot. And then you get like ones just for rain that look like very weird fetish shoes. Like these ones are by Bila. It's very gimp suit, isn't it? Look. <laughs> Overshoes are great, they do look weird. I'm gonna be honest, it is weird having a neoprene shoe over your shoe. They do tend to like get chewed up quite easily when you're walking on them because of how they sit around the cleat. They're a pain in the ass to get on sometimes. It literally feels like you're about to rip them. I'll show you with these actually, look. I don't actually need these today, but we're gonna try and use these like funky sex boots and put these on the shoe. And I'm gonna show you just how hard it can be to put on an overshoe. So the thing is, you have this zip all the way out the back, right? And then you have these two holes. Obviously that one's for your cleat and that one's for the heel. But you somehow have to like, uh, maneuver it on, like, like so. Get it all the way over the cleat. <laughs> it's a very, um, very simple, non-stressy, easy process. Ah, oh, there you go. So here's me being all weird about wearing long lycra because they look like leggings, and then I rock up in a pair of like sexy sex boots. If it's absolutely bucketing down with rain, the last thing you care about is what people think. Actually, scratch that. You should never care what people think about you. The only reason that I don't like wearing certain things is because I don't like wearing certain things. It's not because of anyone else's influence is because I just don't like it. And, and if you do like it, that's fine, because you just do you guys. And something to remember is, right, even if you invest in a really nice pair of overshoes, your shoe has holes in the bottom. So if the floor's wet and you're walking around, your foot will get wet. You know, this only protects it from the spray from your wheel and the, the rain falling from the sky. But you will get a wet foot if you're walking around in like big puddles with like road shoes or mountain bike shoes on. The only way that you can avoid this is by buying a full winter shoe and they tend to be more waterproof, more water resistant than these. Another thing that you can do is you can take the insole out and you can put a bit of tape inside just to like make it a little bit more waterproof. Or if it's really cold and wet, you can always do the whole plastic bag thing. You put your socks on, you put a plastic bag over your sock and then you put your shoe on, that keeps you all nice and snug and warm. Some people have waterproof socks. I find waterproof socks just a bit uncomfortable. I don't like the material. They're not fully waterproof. And if your feet sweat and then you get a bit wet and th they just end up a bit minging after a long ride, I find. I haven't spent years working as a bike messenger in all weathers. I would much rather take a spare pair of socks or use the plastic bag trick than use sealskin socks. I just never liked them. But if you like them, again, that's up to you. Some people love seal skins and waterproof socks, other people don't. So yeah, the only other thing that I haven't really spoke about is a waterproof jacket. This is when I would look for a cycling specific one. You're gonna want a good cut. It's gonna wanna fit you when you're on the bike in a cycling position. A lot of them have a lower back than front because obviously you're leaning forward and this like eliminates some of the spray going up your back and soaking through. They're breathable and they're built for the specific purpose of cycling. So whereas like gloves, gloves are just gloves, you know, I'm gonna be honest, if you're buying gloves, it doesn't really matter. Base layers, again, doesn't really matter. But for jackets and kits, I would stick to cycling specific stuff because that's the stuff that works. It's been tried and tested. You know, you don't have to spend thousands. It doesn't have to be like PNS or like universal colors. It can be whatever, you know. Decathlon's a good place to go if you wanna spend slightly less. If budget isn't really an issue, then not honestly. Any of the big brands like MAP, Universal Colours, Rafa, they all have really good winter cycling gear. So I'm sitting there boiling, the heating's on, it's freezing outside, I'm all laid up, ready for a ride. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my gloves, I'm going to grab my shoes, and I'm going to say thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know if I've missed anything, and I'll catch you guys very soon. Bye.